one. And, and actually, now, um, I really should have been more careful. I didn't really mention this much. Uh, but now that I've got these, some of the torques are going one direction. Some of these torques are going the other direction. I really should have said we, we should define our torque. And, and that's what this right-hand rule is saying. Positive uh, right-hand rule. So if, if it is twisting and my thumb is pointing out of the cut, that would be a positive torque. If it's twisting and my thumb's pointing into the cut, that would be a negative. So positive torque and positive stress, shear stress, would be right-hand rule, positive out of the cut. So if you're looking down the barrel of the cut, counterclockwise is positive. But be careful because sometimes you, you cut it on the other side, and you, so you have to kind of look down the barrel. Counterclockwise would be positive. Right hand rule out of the cut is positive. Okay, so let's look at this next one. We're click. We, we've got a lot of torques here. Uh, the shaft is solid, has diameter of forty millimeters. Determine the absolute, the maximum shear stress in the shaft and sketch the shear stress distribution. Let's don't, don't talk about this, sorry. Uh, what I actually want you to do is to sketch the torque diagram. Let's, let's well, we, we, we could do that. Let's term the maximum, absolute maximum shear stress. And I'll show you how to do a torque diagram. Torque diagram. Okay, so I know that the maximum shear stress occurs on the outside edge, but is it on the outside edge in that section, the outside edge in that section, the outside edge? You know, we've got four different sections that the maximum stress might occur. So let's find the torque. So if I'm not really given a specific uh, location, uh, let's find the internal torque inside each of those sections, and then I think we'll be able to tell where is the maximum. Okay, so to find the internal torque, we, we cut it, right? We throw away. So I would, I would throw away this section, and so I would cut this right here, and here's my cut. What do I need at that cut? What do I need at that cut? So here, I cut it here. I've got 15 going that way. What do I need right here at the cut in order for this to still be in static equilibrium? I need a 15 going over this way. That would be a negative 15. So the torque inside section AB, negative 15, sorry, Newton meters negative 15 newton meters now let's cut it between b and c so here here's what that would look like i've i've got 15 and i've got 25 so now what do i need here at this cut i would need a 40 right torque inside section bc negative 40 newton meters and then do the same thing over here, if I have, let me try to clean this up a little bit. Uh, if I've got right here, so I've got 15 and 25 coming over this way, but then I've got 30 that, that counteracts it, but I still need another, I still need another 10, right? So the torque inside section CD is negative 10 Newton meters. Oops. And then inside that section, now actually I, I could look at I could look at the longer portion, or I, maybe this one makes more sense to come here and look at the, the simpler, easy side. Let's do both for a sec. Let's do both and kind of double check our answer. What if we kept this long side? Here's the cut. Here's the cut right here. 
Um, if I've got 15 and 25, then I've got 30, but then I've got 60. So I've got 60, 15, 25 going over that way. That's kind of 100 going over that way. Then I would need 30. I would need another 70 going over that way. Would that be positive or negative? That would be negative 70 into the cut. Torque inside section D, E, negative 70 newton meters into the cut. Okay, would I have gotten that same thing if I had come from the other direction? Let's come from the other direction. So now, now I can't really see down the down the barrel of the cut you know it's like like I've been I've been looking down the, the barrel of the cut all right but now when I cut it here um, I've got 70 wait how was that 70 drawn yeah that 70 was drawn here so what do I need at the cut right there I need 70 and you see that that is still negative 70 even though it's drawn you know kind of the opposite direction it's it's, it's equal and opposite uh, that is still a negative 70 because if I if I right hand rule and I'm kind of coming the cut now is on the back side right so this would be still be my thumb would be pointing into the cut on my right hand rule all right so you can come from either side if you know everything about both sides let me kind of just pause right here and mention that you would if i don't already have solved what's happening at the wall then i probably shouldn't come from that side of the wall but if i had solved if i knew what torque was happening at the wall then i could come from either side of it and get the same answer whether you cut it and keep this side or cut it and keep that side if you know everything and if you knew about the supports things like that does that make sense okay these are the torques right here so what is the maximum value you know what is the maximum absolute value it, it would be inside this section de inside section de so the torque would be tr over j sorry the tau the shear stress would be TR over J, 70 Newton meters. You know, we could put negative there, but it asks for the absolute maximum. Uh, 70 Newton meters, an R of 20 millimeters. Hmm. All right, let me be careful here. And then a J, J is pi by two R millimeters to the fourth. I've got meters and millimeters and millimeters to the fourth. I, I should probably really learn some more unit conversions, but I like Newtons, millimeters squared. You know, I like Newtons and millimeters squared. So I'm going to convert that meters to millimeters, multiply that times a thousand, and my answer will be MPA, right? Newton over millimeters squared is MPA. Newton over millimeters. If you, if you don't learn anything from this semester, maybe you'll learn that. So 5.57 MPA. Technically negative, uh, but it asks for the absolute maximum. Now, a torque diagram. A torque diagram uh, would show us the torque inside every section. And so it looked like this. Uh, the first section is negative 15 between A, B, C, D, uh, E. So the first section, it's negative 15. And then at B, due to this 25 Newton meter torque, uh, it goes down to negative 40. And then at C, we, we calculated that it goes back up to 10, but do you see how we might could just use this, these 15, 25, 30, 60. We've got 15 going this way, that, that kind of drops this down 15. And then another 25 drops this to 40. 
But then we go the other direction, 30, which brings us up to negative 10. And then we go back this direction, 60, brings us to negative 70. That's what the torque diagram would show. It would show the torque at every location. All right, it would show the torque at every location. And so then it might be helpful. I didn't have to cut every single time. I just said, okay, I was at 15. If I have another 25, that would bring it down to 40. And then if I've got another 30 the other way, bring it back up to 10. Oh, but then I've got another 60, that would bring it down to 70. And then at the end, it needs to get back to zero. Okay, I'm not going to ask for a torque diagram, but sometimes for these problems, problems like that, um, torque diagrams might be helpful. Might be helpful so you don't have to cut it and read think about it every every cut every section so maybe that's an option <clears throat> all right